So in this video, we are going to discuss with one more important concepts related to tasks, processes and threads. Okay. So before moving further, please like this video guys. Okay. Your like would be very, very essential for us. Also, this note should be available in the description. You should be going and accessing it. So this notes is provided by vtusync.in. Okay. So uh, shout out from our side to them because this is a very uh, beautiful notes. Okay. Each and every concept of module three is covered in detail. Okay. So yeah. So let us discuss with the today's topic that is tasks, processes and threads. Okay. So what you mean by task is task means assigning a task to an embedded system. Okay. That is uh, if you want to assign a task to a particular embedded system, we do, we set a goal of completing a particular uh, task in a particular time interval. Okay. So that task is called as uh, the process which should be taking place in the embedded system. So in the operating system context, a task is defined as the program in execution and the related information maintained by the operating system for the program. Okay. So this is the definition of the task. Task is also known as job in the operating system context. A program or part of it in execution, that is the a part of the task in execution is also called as a process. Okay. The terms task, job and process refer to the same entity in the operating system. Okay. The operating system context and most often they are used interchangeably. Okay. That is interchanging means they are uh, used by uh, one, uh, one or the other times. Okay. So these three are interrelated to each other. A process requires various system resources like CPU for executing the process, memory for storing the code corresponding to the process and associated variables, input output devices for the information ex exchange. Okay. So these are the different system resources. Okay. Uh, which are, which comes under the CPU where the different tasks and uh, jobs and processes are taking place in the embedded system. Now let us see the structure of a process. Okay. The concept of process leads to concurrent execution that is pseudo parallelism of tasks and thereby the efficient utilization of the CPU and other system resources. The concurrent execution is achieved through the sharing of CPU among the processes. Okay, that is this execution part in the process is mainly deal, dealt with the CPU. Okay, that is the inside the CPU since the CPU is called as the brain of the computer or any embedded system that CPU among the processes would be very, very essential for the execution. A process mimics a processor in properties and holds a set of registers, process status, a program counter. So program counter is basically it fetches the next instruction to be executed. Okay. That is that that is meant by the program counter. A program counter to point to the next address executable instruction in the process a stack for holding the local variables associated with the process and the code corresponding to the process okay a process which inherits all the properties of cpu can be considered as a virtual processor okay which inherits all the properties that is uh, a process which has all the properties of the cpu that is uh, if you want to call it as a complete package then it should be having all the properties of the cpu since it is the brain of any embedded system so that's why the process should be having all its properties then only it can be considered as a virtual processor awaiting its turn to have its properties switched into the physical processor when the process gets in turn its registers and program counter register becomes mapped to the physical registers of the cpu okay you see here this is one simple block we have explained for the process here okay so under process what and all are the things uh, required here see here we have one stack pointer then some working registers status registers and the program counter since the program counter is used to create a link between the address of the uh, next upcoming instructions okay then we have code memory in the code memory uh, the, it is corresponding to the process execution the code memory also would be taking place okay so this was one block representing the process next the memory organization of process the memory occupied by the process is segregated into three regions okay those three regions are stack memory data memory and code memory okay so these are the three regions under the memory or uh, that is a process the stack memory holds all the temporary data such as variables local to the process and the data memory holds all the global data for the process okay and the code memory contains the program code instructions corresponding to the process on loading a process into the main memory a specific area of memory is allocated for the process okay 
the stack memory usually starts at the highest memory address from the memory area allocated for the process depending on the OS kernel implementation. Okay, the kernel part we have seen in the previous video where we have discussed with one uh, one type of kernel is monolithic and micro kernel. So what are the difference between those kernels? I have explained you in that video. Okay, uh, that kernels are under this implementation of stack memory would be starting from the highest memory address as they mentioned here. That is which is allocated to the process. Okay, so that would be depending on the kernel applications. So this is one uh, flow of memory stack memory inside this we have here see first we have stack memory then it goes downwards then data memory comes outward upwards in order to have a, a linking point then this is the uh, uh, area of data memory and code memory okay next let us discuss with the process states and state transition the creation of a process to its termination is not a single step operation the process traverses through a series of states during its transition from the newly created state to the terminated state. The cycle through which a process changes its state from newly created to execution completed is called as process life cycle. Okay. So the various states through which a process traverses uh, through during a process life cycle indicates the current status of the process with respect to time and also provides information on what it is allowed to do next. Okay. So this is the process states is not a uh, uh, what to say. It, it is not a random process hence it is a continuous and a sequential process so that's why the state transition between each each step would be taking place so that's why they have shown this process states in form of a state transition diagram you see here we have one created then the uh, in, then the process is incepted to memory then it is ready for execution then after that scheduled for execution in, in order to run the program the scheduling should be taking place then Again, after running, waiting for input output resources in order to be blocked or the completion, then execution completion would be the final step in order to complete the execution. Okay, so this is the complete state transition for the process. If you please uh, note it down. Okay. So these are the different states that is created state, ready state, running state, blocked state or wait state and completed state. Okay, as mentioned in this diagram. Okay, the created state is a state at which a process is being created or uh, started okay then the ready state uh, it is a process incepted into the memory awaiting for the processor time for execution okay that is the process storing memory okay that is called as ready state running state the state where the source code instructions corresponding to the process is being executed okay that execution state is called as running state then blocked state it refers to the state where the running process is temporarily suspended that is in the middle of any program if you want to make any change uh, at that point of time you should be stopping right so that is called as block state then completed state is the final process execution state is called as completed state so now let us discuss with the threads now a thread is a, a primitive that can execute the code uh, it is a single sequential flow of control within the process okay so this is very important here it is a single sequential flow of control that is we don't have any multiple sequential flow of control once it would be executed and it should be executed at, at once only again it cannot be repeated okay a thread is also known as lightweight process a process that can have many threads of execution that is different threads which are part of the process share the same address space meaning they share the same data memory code memory and the heap memory so also these threads maintain their old threads uh, own thread status that is cpu register values program counter and stack so they are uh, independent so they don't depend on anything they have their own cpu register values program counter etc okay so this was about threads so this was the uh, just to represent the thread this is one uh, uh, stack memory diagram so please go through it okay next let us discuss with the one important uh, difference question that th because this is multiple times repeated so that's why i thought of discussing it differences between thread and process okay so we have here around six points that i'm going to tell you under thread we have thread is a single unit of uh, execution and it is a part of a process okay process is a program in execution and contains one or more threads okay thread is a single unit of execution which is present inside the process okay whereas process contains the number of threads okay a thread does not have its own data memory and heap memory it shares the data memory and heap memory with other threads of the same process okay then process has its own code memory data memory and stack memory a thread cannot live independently 
a process contains at least one thread so that's why it can be leaving independently okay so there can be multiple threads in a process the first thread is called as the main thread and it calls the main function and occupies the start at the starting of the stack memory of the process whereas the threads within the process share code data and heap memory each thread holds the separate memory area for the stack threads are very inexpensive so that you have cheap to create processes are very expensive to create it involves many os overhead okay context switching is uh, inexpensive and fast whereas context switching in uh, processes is complex and it involves a lot of os and it is comparatively slower okay if a thread expires its stack reclaimed it is stack is uh, reclaimed by the process but if a process is expired or it dies the resources are, are allocated to it and they are reclaimed by the os and all the associated threads of the uh, processes also dies okay so that's why if a process is terminated then the threads which are involved in the process also would be terminated they won't play any part so these were the key differences between thread and process so that's all for the video guys so we have discussed with the tasks thread and process in this video also we have seen the differences between thread and process okay